Right now on the Crim 2 News at noon, chaos in Taiwan after the largest earthquake in more than two decades rocked the country. Coming up, we hear from officials and witnesses. And it is much cooler today overall as we are tracking not only the big drop in temperatures, but where the rain is currently falling. Disgusting. Slander is what it was. Where's the evidence? I would like to know. And emotions were high at a Coeur d'Alene City Council meeting while residents talk about the alleged racism against a visiting basketball team. Hi everyone, great to see you at this noon hour. Thanks for joining us for the Crim 2 News at Noon. I'm Channing Curtis in for Laura Papetti. We have a lot of news to get to this afternoon, but let's start things off with a look at the forecast. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick told us about all the sunshine and warm weather that we were going to get the last couple of days, but now, Thomas, today things are changing a and, bit. And it is much cooler. Channing, you and I no both noted on our way to work, which was well earlier this morning, it was warm. Temperatures had been in the 50s from the overnight hours and they continue to steadily just drop and drop and drop because of a cold front that is currently passing through our region. So our temperatures really will be stuck at around 50 degrees for the rest of the day to go along with some of these rain showers. Let's zoom in over the Palouse, a steady rain over Pullman and Moscow, Pomeroy and Lewiston, and you can follow that little bit of a rain band all the way through St. Mary's and 4th of July Pass areas like Pinehurst. This is not really moving, so if you're getting rain, you're getting the most rain today. And where it is not rainy, like in Coeur d'Alene and Spokane, you probably end up more dry today overall, though it is cloudy and cool for the afternoon. 51 is the current temperature in Spokane, but it was 63 at midnight earlier tonight. So it's just been dropping steadily through the day. We'll be in the 50s this afternoon, and then it will drop once again this evening as we begin this more showery and unsettled weather pattern. At least nine people are dead after Taiwan's strongest earthquake in 25 years to rock the island during morning rush hour. The 7.4 magnitude quake injured more than 1,000 people. CBS's Leah Mishkin reports from London. A shocking scene as rescuers race to save people from a collapsed building in Taiwan. This dramatic video shows the moment it fell. A deadly earthquake hit as commuters were making their way to work in school on the island of 23 million people. Landslides and debris shut down highways. The impact so strong it was felt in neighboring China, sending school children running. Others in Taiwan took cover with protective gear. Authorities issued tsunami warnings in Taiwan and Japan. Both have since been lifted. I've felt some earthquake, but nothing like this. Yoli Seipang had just arrived from California. She was in her hotel room when the 7.4 magnitude quake woke her up. The whole room was shaking. Crews have worked around the clock to rescue dozens of people trapped inside buildings, tunnels, even a coal mine. As night fell in Taiwan, authorities warned of more tremors in the days ahead. And the White House said the U.S. is ready to offer assistance. Leia Mishkin, CBS News, London. The economic fallout from the quake has yet to be calculated. The island is home to Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, a major supplier of chips to companies such as Apple. Well, following the January door plug blowout, the Justice Department is now investigating possible criminal charges against Boeing. CBS News has confirmed the DOJ will meet with the families of victims of two Boeing Max crashes that killed 346 people in 2018 and 2019. As part of a settlement in those cases, Boeing was not prosecuted, but agreed to abide by certain terms for a three-year period ending January 7th of this year. The door plug incident on an Alaska flight happened on January 5th, just two days before that time period was up. While it has nothing to do with the earlier MAX crashes, the Justice Department is looking at whether Boeing's conduct surrounding the incident breached its agreement, possibly opening, opening it up to criminal prosecution in those previous crashes. At 12.04, we have new details on that house fire where two Spokane police officers shot and killed a man after he allegedly shot at them. Spokane police now say the man officers killed did not start that fire. Police have now arrested 43-year-old Nicholas Whitney for arson. He appeared in court just yesterday. Court documents state Whitney set the house on fire while at least five people were inside. A judge has set his bond at $100,000.
This afternoon, we are still following up with concerns about alleged racial harassment targeting the University of Utah women's basketball players more than a week ago. Last night, Coeur d'Alene residents questioned city council members about the situation, and many people asked the council to do more to stop racism within the community. Our Nicole Hernandez was at that meeting last night and has more on what was said. Person after person came to the stand with the same concern. I appreciate and I support the apology to our visitors and the effort to investigate and prosecute the perpetrators. But I would say that we can't stop there. We need to also focus on proactively shifting our culture and preventing this from happening again. Only one speaker took the opposite side, upset the whole community is under fire. Disgusting. Slander is what it was. Where's the evidence? I would like to know. The council says they do know, though, something happened. Just because you don't know about a video doesn't mean something didn't occur. And a young woman certainly doesn't have to have a video to prove themselves that something occurred. Beyond the incident last week, the executive director of the Human Rights Education Institute told the council people have been reporting more hate crimes year over year. These vary from graffiti on bridges and park areas, um, el an elementary student being called the N-word as they exited the bus, pride flags being st stolen from multiple properties and off of a person, um, a student actually, and destroyed in the bathroom, homophobic and racial statements on the boulevard. In 2022, the Institute had 22 reports. In 2023, 39. And this year, in just three months, they've already had 18. But I would also say that our, our communities worked really, really hard to be welcoming and to overcome any sort of stain that we might have had in the past. There's a lot of people that have worked really hard to do that, and I think we can do that. These residents asking the council, though, to do more to stop these incidents. In Coeur Nicole Hernandez, Crime 2 News.